Welcome to Florida. We're in Melbourne, kind of a little bit outside of Orlando doing a shoot. We got a little bit of free time here and we happen to bring this along. Aqua Robot Man. It's a great name. <laughs> Sounds like a superhero. Whoa. Super bright. Hey you, have you been drinking? I have. <laughs> this is like an underwater submarine drone thingy. Apparently this is like a Wi-Fi hub or something. It comes with this long cable that hooks up to this. Radio and Wi-Fi signals do not really go through water very far. Just like bullets. I, I watched an episode of Mythbusters about bullets and water. If someone was coming after you with a machine gun, how deep underwater do you have to go before they can't kill you anymore? I'm gonna say 10 feet. Assuming that they're shooting at you from like a 45 degree angle, you could go like two or three feet or something and then you're safe. The mafia comes after you, just be like, oh yeah, well I got a swimming pool, sucks for you. Just dive in, they can't kill you. They'll be like, drink it, another one. They can shoot your snorkel though, so hold your breath. Oh no, it's sinking. I think it's supposed to sink until the motor's on. Oh, we got an image, okay. We got an image. So far it just sank straight to the bottom. I don't know why it's just moving along the ground though. What? It's taking us a minute to figure out how to operate this thing. I think we're gonna have to play with it a little bit more and we'll come back in a second. So basically last night we spent about two hours trying to figure out how to get the Nemo thing to work and it just kept sinking to the bottom. Eventually I talked to Aqua Robot Man. <laughs> I swear, that should be a comic book series. It should. So I hit him up and I was like, okay, what's going on? And they said that it might be missing a buoyancy foam thing that's supposed to be inside to keep the backside afloat because I noticed the back end of the Nemo drone was sinking a whole lot faster. We can't really complain too much because they sent it to us for free. But at the same time, that doesn't make me feel too good about the quality control of this thing. But anyways, we had planned an extra day here in Florida just to test it out. So it's kind of a bummer that they're not gonna be able to get this foam thing out to me for another five days. So we have some ideas. I was thinking a little balloon, but Steve here had a much better idea. I think we should use a condom because it has far more strength than a balloon generally and it shouldn't burst when put underneath the water. All right, so yeah, Steve and I are about to head into Walmart and buy some condoms together. Which one has the best buoyancy? And PSI. When you're inflating it, this might be good. It tastes like strawberry. Why don't we just send this in with it, dude? Just... <laughs> what is that? It's a little sonar device. I don't think we need it to be that big. We don't need that much buoyancy. That's gonna be too much. This thing is gonna go bloop straight to the top. Where's the miniature one? Steve, go ask. I can't ask. That'd be too stereotypical. <laughs> Dude, let's just get a flavored one. Does it taste good? I kind of feel like that's too much. That's a lot of buoyancy. If you bring it down, it's too stretchy. <laughs> how stretchy this thing is. Or it can't go down now. It has the opposite issue. We're gonna go for version two and I think I'm gonna stick this one down here this time. We should also make sure we clean this up and don't leave the wrappers here. I was thinking we're gonna find these wrappers here and be like, what the heck was going on? Probably about that much. The balloon keeps trying to come up the side and flipping the whole thing over sideways. Even just this is so much better than it was yesterday. That one must be strawberry. Let me know how it tastes. Uh, you're not gonna do this one? Perfect. The picture quality out of this thing is actually pretty impressive. I'm so happy this condom idea worked. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna take it to a place that has a lot of fish apparently. Very clear water, so hopefully we can test it out there, get some really awesome footage over there. Till we get the actual buoyancy foam, I can't really tell you how it handles. Right now it handles actually pretty decently, so tomorrow it's more of just a test of image quality and can we use it to get some awesome stuff anyway. Hopefully we see an alligator. We could see anything living. With the camera, I'd be pretty stoked with that. Except a person. Except for a person. <laughs> That'd be really lame. A dead person would be actually <laughs> cooler. I'm supposed to go 100 meters underwater, which is actually pretty insane. Oh, here we are. Wakiva, Wakaiva. This is like a Disney theme park almost. I'm waiting for a, a hippopotamus to pop out of the water. Steve, isn't this kind of nice? Yeah, it's like being on a date. Yeah, you brought those condoms though, right? It comes with this bag, which is actually pretty nice. It's got a little compartment for our reel. Also, it has the Wi-Fi station in here. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is that there's no on and off switch. Like to turn it off, you have to remove the battery and you can't turn it off while the battery's in there. So you have to store the battery separately. So check it out. We got the live feed now. So I guess it's time to just send it underwater. Whoa, the water's so blue and clear underwater. I'm getting an awesome shot of a turtle right now. Whoa, there's like a turtle there that has something attached to it. I 
see this yellow cable and I'm just tracing it back here to the boat. So it's not like a drone where it could show you exactly where you are on a map, but you could always just find the cable connected to it and you could just follow it back. And it does feel a little bit rocky, but I feel like that's just because we're not using the proper foam. Oh, there it is. Here, this is actually really cool. Here, switch off. Obviously, this is more of a niche product. I believe this is over a thousand dollars. It is actually fun though. Like if you live near clear bodies of water, then you'll probably have a blast with this thing. We actually have a job coming up where we actually do need to film some stuff underwater. And I am scuba certified, but it's still a lot of work to get underwater footage. And it's not super easy too. And underwater housing for a camera like this alone is like thousands of dollars already. Scuba diving and filming is actually really, really fun, but it's pretty difficult. It's going face to face. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> I've never seen you that excited, Steve. It's going right over the top. It's just went right over the, it's right above. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, oh my God, what? I don't know what's cooler, the fact that we're getting an epic shot of a turtle right here or Steve looking this excited. I've never seen him so happy before. <laughs> One concern I kind of have is this line getting tangled because it does tend to wrap around stuff, but it hasn't gotten tangled yet. You probably want to be a little cautious of going in between a bunch of tree roots and stuff and then coming back the wrong way or else it's just going to get wrapped up in a big knot. Also, since it is hardwire, it is kind of nice that you don't have to worry so much about the range of this thing. Like as long as you have a cable, you're still good to go further and deeper and apparently up to 100 meters here it doesn't really get that deep so we can't really test that today but for sure this is pretty cool it's always just so funny every time it comes back up to the surface you just see this little pink condom <laughs> strawberry flavored i could stay out here all day doing this actually but the battery life's pretty good we've been on this thing for a while and it's still going strong that's so cool there's like a whole school of fish following it just checking it out <laughs> that's awesome we got to get on a plane in like two hours so <laughs> should probably get back to shore. <laughs> All right, and we're back, home sweet home. And I must admit, I actually really enjoyed playing with this. And so did Steve, obviously. This is one of those things that you don't realize how much fun they are until you're out somewhere just zipping around. Now I'm still waiting for that buoyancy foam to come in so I could get this properly operational. But even with our own custom flotation device, it actually worked really well. So I feel like I'm gonna continue using this, especially if I get out to some like cool locations, maybe places with sharks or something, that'd be cool. And once you learn how to use this thing, it's actually very straightforward and easy to use. Steve and I had a lot of issues trying to figure this out, but that was really just because it kept sinking to the bottom and we thought we were doing something wrong. Turns out that they just forgot to put a piece of foam in there. <laughs> they need to go check in on their factory and crack a whip. Cause how do you put this thing together and close it up and not realize, hey, this giant box of foam missing. <laughs> Damn it, hiccups. It does have some pretty cool features like this light that was built in. We didn't really need to use it, but again, this thing goes all the way down to like a hundred meters. That is deep. That's gonna be dark. So I guess that's when this light would really help out. Now the app itself is pretty straightforward. There's not much to it and you pretty much control everything from your phone. Again, pretty easy once you have it figured out, but it's not one of those apps that you could pick up right away and immediately know how to use it. I actually recommend reading the instruction manual for before use. There's not that many options when it comes to video formats. I mean, you get your resolutions of HD, 2.7K, 4K, and all at 30 frames per second. It doesn't look like you could hop into 24. You have HD at 120 frames per second as well. Now I've just been using it on the phone, but there's also ways to control it from a gaming controller, or you could also put on a VR headset and look around. And apparently this Nemo will look around the same way you do. So that could be kind of cool to test out one day. I mentioned this earlier, but you can't just shut it off. You have to take out this battery pack turn it off or else eventually it's just start beeping at you. And there's also been a few times where this battery basically got stuck in there. We both needed to really crank on it to get it off. Probably because we put it on there and then we put it into cold water and bring it back out to hot weather. And after a couple repetitions of that, it just kind of fused together. Another thing is that this does not record onto a memory card. It has internal storage where it saves all its videos and photos, which is cool and all. I'm assuming they did it so that they don't have to have a bunch of card slots open that could possibly get flooded. But the downside is when you're downloading the 
media off of here, you have to do it through either your phone app or through your computer. And it's just slow. It took a pretty long time to download a couple clips off of here. Way, way slower than downloading it off a memory card. And also this thing needs to be submerged in cold water while it's being downloaded or else it could possibly overheat. So you gotta take this, dunk it in cold water and then hook up your phone or your computer to it and then just wait a while for it to download. But each clip does come with a pair, which is nice. There's the full res and there's like a smaller, much more compressed preview file. So I just downloaded all the preview files and then picked out, ooh, I want this clip and this clip. And then you can download the full res of the clips you want. Now in terms of the way you can move it in the water, it can go straight forward, back, up, down. You could also kind of tilt up and down and pivot like that. The only thing it can't do is like a straight sideways shot like that. And that would be really nice to have because that probably is one of the most popular drone shots out there. But hey, for the most part, you're gonna be able to work with this. Finally, when it comes to pricing this thing out, I have seen the prices of these kind of bounce around a little bit, but currently the basic package is about 1250 bucks. And then the advanced package, which comes with the bag and all this that I kind of showed you guys is about 16, 1700. And originally I was thinking this must be a really niche product because how many people could possibly live right by water and would want to use this regularly? But clearly a lot of people do because this originally launched on Kickstarter. They tried to raise $30,000 and they raised over 80. So they completely crushed their target and here it is. Anyways, I had a blast playing with this thing and you'll probably be seeing this more on my channel. Let's read some comments from my last video, which is all about this Canon EOS RP, which is about a $1,300 full frame camera from Canon. It's an awesome camera for some people, terrible options for others, but let's see. Top comment was that my Canon 1300D works perfectly fine. Thank you very much. Crying inside. <laughs> actually, that's a T6 here in the States, but that's actually a pretty solid camera. For the first few years of doing video professionally, I had the Canon T2i, which was my primary camera, very similar to that T6 that you have there, or 1300D. And I actually did quite a few projects with that camera. Once you get comfortable with it, there's a lot you can do with that camera. And I actually shot a couple commercials. Some of them actually went on a Jumbotron during a NBA game, all with a very basic camera. Although I did rent some audio gear and the audio gear ended up being worth like five times more than my camera. <laughs> Cause you gotta get that clean, crispy audio, but you pair a good audio with your camera, dude gonna look awesome. Danny says, only one video ago you were sponsored by Canon. How you start this video is, I wouldn't buy this camera. <laughs> Keep up the quality content. I love sponsorship. It kind of fuels my addiction to buying gear. They allow me to spend more time making these YouTube videos, but I will never sign a contract that says I can't talk crap about their brand because that's my favorite part, dude. Looks like you have scissor hand gestures when you're talking. Wait, what are you talking about? Do I do a lot of weird stuff with my hands? I, I don't know. I love how you kiss your bike right where your butt sits. Jan Hempstad says, Gene while miking up his client. <laughs> this guy has no idea where this has been. Could you compare the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with the Canon EOS R? I wanna buy one or the other, but I can't decide. Maybe I will do that. But for now, I would tell you that if you're gonna vlog or you want autofocus, you're gonna film yourself at any point, EOS R. And if you want like raw video capabilities and it has like an XLR with fan and power and a few other video friendly features, then maybe go with that. But the best way to decide is to just look at the footage side by side and see which one you like better so I'll put that on the list anyways I'm gonna go look for some sharks so I'll see you guys later